the Greeks fell because of sexual immorality. So did the Romans, right? We embraced the sexual revolution in the 60s and it birthed this massive explosion of porn in our country. I sh people would think uh, they should have access to porn if they want to and surely it hurts nobody. It hurts everybody. Do you know, Jan, proven scientifically, porn is the only drug, and it's a drug, it's the most violent drug of them all. It's the only drug that retraces the neural pathways in the brain. It actually changes how you operate cognitively. Cocaine doesn't do that. Cocaine influences you while you're under its influence. It doesn't permanently change brain chemistry. Permanently. Porn does that. So a porn addict, and there's not a single pedophile that's not a porn addict. There's not a single child abuser that's not a porn addict. They start living life daily for the sexual high. Well, here's your problem. An opioid high can last three hours. If you're really good at using drugs, you can ride it up, down, up, down, and have a day's worth of high. A sexual high lasts 30 seconds. So you have more frequency of use. So you progress down the chain of the drug much faster. So think of it this way. If sex is a set of train tracks, you can't say porn is on a different track. Child abuse is on a different track. Prostitute, no, it's one track. Where are you on the track? We're all sexual beings. Are you on the track at a stop where that's healthy? Right? A relationship with one partner where you are, for me it's marriage, right? Or are you further down the track where you engage in pornography? Or maybe a little further down the track where it's hardcore pornography? Or you're purchasing sex down the track? Or you're far enough down the track where now you're purchasing sex from minors? It's the same track. So porn feeds the beast. Any engagement in porn, Jan, and this is not a judgment, it's a, it's a scientific fact. Any engagement in porn, social casual porn, feeds the beast that ultimately exploits children. That's the ultimate prize for people. They want to go younger, younger, pre-puberty, right? Right? Virgin pre-puberty. So it's the same set of tracks. Pornography is the entry drug that results later on into sex trafficking. Am I saying anybody that watches porn traffics children? No. But you're on the track and the red light is flashing. You're heading in the wrong direction. You're too far down the track. It's time to get help and come to a healthy sexual you know, mindset and environment. So I've done, I've done some reading about this, about the, how pornography alters brain chemistry. But this, this whole idea that, you know, sort of the logical conclusion of a track and so forth, this is, you know, obviously a very highly contentious issue, right? Sure, like, yeah. sure. <laughs> you, know? you, you can contend it if you, if, if you don't really know and interact with the community. So, so if I would say, okay, 50% of pedophiles watch porn. No, 100% are addicted to porn. 100%. This is a critical element in our society that we're normalizing, but it's an action that violates human rights. It's an action that violates people. When people say, well, in this porn video, nobody's getting hurt. She wants to do it. Do you know that over 60% of women in porn are placed in that video by their pimp? Because they're not making enough money on the track. They've got a quota. The porn industry is 100% complicit and infiltrated with sex trafficking. 100%. People watch a porn video, then they expect their husband or wife to produce that kind of a performance for them, but it's an artificial performance. It's a film. It's take 27. There's drugs involved. There's exploitation involved. There's indoctrination involved. There's pressure. It's artificial. It can never be recreated in a healthy relationship, right? It's a drug. It's a drug. And so look look at the other things, the outliers. Uh, look at, okay, alcoholism and then Divorce and alcoholism. Trace those two things, right? And it's a high number. Al al and alcoholism leads to divorce. Porn use, a higher rate of divorce. Disassociation with family members. Porn, higher than alcohol. There's not a single drug that alienates and breaks apart more violently than porn because the drug is so violently progressive. It, you can't slow it down. Do you know that today our number one segment of society with erectile dysfunction disorder is 18 to 23 year olds? 18 to 23 year olds. Why? Because the average age of porn entry in America today are boys age 8. So now you've got self-stimulation on porn 
desensitization. The porn needs to be more violent, more graphic, more risque to get the dopamine effect, to get the high, to get the climactic sexual experience. And so you're desensitizing a child through their puberty years. We got college students that have to go on medicine to function properly. That's the result of porn, 100%. Since the advent of the internet, right, um, there's been a kind of shocking, when I say shocking, I mean like a shock to society, a shocking change to society. Because even I remember when I was a kid, you know, you had to go to like the video store if you wanted to, you know, touch the forbidden fruit of pornography. Buy or the something. magazine yes. that was behind right. a black cover. Right. Right, that may kind have, of thing. You asked your age. You may have had to get a friend that was older to buy it. Yeah. And somehow in this time period from then to here, it's basically on demand available to anybody. It's, yeah, and it's free. And this is the shocking part because we have to talk big tech. We have to talk about the responsibility. We have to talk Section 230. You can't tell me that you should be able to access free pornography on YouTube. I mean, because if you can access it, a five-year-old can access it. Because they don't ask the five-year-old. You, you shouldn't be able to have child porn on Facebook. You shouldn't be able to access free porn. But they understand. Those who produce porn understand. We'll give you your trial sample for free. Because it's violently addictive. We've got 12-year-old boys we're working with, Jan, that are addicted, that watch two and a half hours of porn a week. That child's life. Is, is, is destroyed, the amount of rehab that child, to just reset in that child the purpose of women, the value of women, the value of men, the value of love. Everything is destroyed. What's love? What is consent? What is consensual? What's, what's risque? What, what is socially acceptable? That child is in a tailspin. And now we want that child when they're 21, 22 to be able to fight for their First Amendment right. That child will not fight for anything. That child will do okay if he's 21 and he can survive. A, a sexually compromised human being is a broken human being that can't fight. So I'll argue, and this is my opinion, and I'm not speaking for the community, it's by design. It's by design because I can show you policies that are being written in Congress, right, to promote the exploitation of children. I can show you, so it has to be by design. Right. And so my argument is, you don't break America with war. You don't break America with, with, with the stock market or with financial crisis. We've lived through recessions. I was at the Hoover Dam the other day and just relived the ingenuity that took to put a labor force to work. You break America with sexual immorality. That's how you break this country. And if you touch the youth, boys age 8, the average age to enter porn, porn is free on the internet. It's on social media. Do you know that over 65% of middle school girls today in our country have sent a nude picture of themselves through, through social media, through tech, TikTok or a text message, a sext? You got Vogue, Teen Vogue magazine training them. This is, this is public. Literally a 12-page publication telling girls what's the right lighting, the right camera angle, how to take a nude selfie, the value it's going to give you, the affirmation it's going to give you. That is proactively moving children towards desensitizing themselves for sex with adults ultimately, right? It's evil. This is a big allegation. You're basically saying you believe that there's policies, there's actual policies that you looked at that have to be deliberately trying to hurt, well, it's basically the American people through their youth. So what, direct me to these policies that you're talking if about. You, yeah. If you understand the, the, the progression of where this came from, so the, the World Health Organization was part of writing what we'd call a sexual manifesto for the world's youth. They brought in UNESCO, which is a United Nations organization. They brought in SICUS, which is a US government organization over curriculum. They brought in the International Planned Parenthood Foundation. Right? That mindset, that manifesto, it's not a curriculum, that mindset saying this is where sexuality should go with youth. Went to Africa, it went to Scotland, it got in incorporated in Scotland in the form of a curriculum called Comprehensive Sex Ed. And then Gavin Newsom was the first governor in our country to sign an executive order to bring Comprehensive Sex Ed into the public school system of California. Go look at State Bill 145. Go look at Assembly Bill 2218. Go look at these bills that are highly controversial, bringing sexual content 
under the guise of the 1970 uh, uh, obscenity exemption statute where you can have nude pictures in a library, nude pictures in a museum, now you, in, and in curriculum. It's illustrated, but it's porn for 10-year-olds, age 10, right? Where a child opens up and it's full frontal nudity bent over of a girl. They're discussing sexual slang in the classroom. They get a thing what's called the gender bread man which is a non-sexual you know stick figure they pin on sexuality they use sexual slang they're told that you know um, consent is their choice children are by law given sexual agency in the state of california to get puberty blockers at age three now we have a comprehensive, a comprehensive sex ed curriculum that's being taught in classrooms. It's taught in, in Austin, Texas, for, for crying out loud. Because independent school district superintendents can opt in, right? So they opt in to comprehensive sex ed. And they may bring it under another name, right? But it's comprehensive sex ed. It's, it's the curriculum. It's perfectly normal. What's happening to my body for boys? What's happening to my body for girls? Sex, puberty, and stuff. These are books children are reading in the classroom now I told you earlier familial trafficking is worse than any other form because it's an authority figure that says it's okay so what do you think happens to a boy in a classroom when he's talking about in a engaging a conversation about sex about sex with the same gender about sex with adults right about experimenting with sex and he's 10 and it's a teacher that's teaching him this class do you know that if a teacher refuses to teach it the school district will bring in a Planned Parenthood representative to teach the class this is fact well documented these bills are rampant around the country Governor Inslee state of Washington sign it in executive order we're working with these state school boards that are saying we didn't even have a choice to vote on this it was an executive order radical policy young through our country it came to texas it got voted down in the state of texas but independent school districts opted in right so th this is all about having a sexual conversation with a child in the classroom what for People will argue, well, we need to help children because teen pregnancy is out of control. No, you're not teaching them about safe sex. You're introducing sexual concepts to a brain that's not capable. We having a hard time as men in our 40s or whatever we are, you know, get handling sex in sexual relationships and conversation. I mean, it's complex. A five-year-old, do you know that it's in kindergarten? A five-year-old. We now have... In, in two states in the US them handing out condoms to fifth graders in the classroom why why would I hand a condom to a fifth grader because they're already teaching comprehensive sex ed so you're activating a young mind to think sex the second you do that young the pedophile online can spot that child he can find a needle in a haystack because he knows which child has had sexual conversation he knows which child is open to sexual conversation so the minute you open that komodo in the classroom you can't shut it off when the kids now on facebook on TikTok. you can't shut it off when the kid now sees a sexual image on facebook oh that's wrong it's not wrong i saw it in the classroom so it's desensitization that's a fact and it's rampant in our country rampant